In this video, I'm going to talk about array variables. As you'll see, array variables are particularly useful when you want to store a large number of related data items. In fact, once you've learned about array variables, you'll be able to write some very, very useful programs. Before I begin, let's quickly review what's going on inside the computer's memory when we use regular variables. When this line of code executes, the operating system will set aside a piece of memory and it will give it the name stfruit. The exact location of this piece of memory is entirely up to the operating system. It doesn't really concern us as programmers. But suffice to say, no other program can use that piece of memory. It belongs to this program. Immediately after a string variable has been declared, it will contain something. It contains a zero length string. Think of a pair of double quotes with nothing in between them. If you declare a numeric variable, for example an integer, then immediately after declaration it will contain the value 0. For the purposes of this discussion we don't really need to worry about this zero length string. When this line of code executes, I'm assigning a value to the variable. I'm putting the text banana in there. When I output the contents of a variable, it doesn't change the contents of the variable. We're simply taking a copy of what's in the variable and then displaying it on the screen. My variable still contains the text banana. This line of code will overwrite the existing contents of the variable. We're replacing the text banana with the text orange. The original contents of the variable are now lost. When this line of code executes, a separate piece of memory is being set aside. This time the piece of memory is called stfruit2. No prizes for guessing what that's going to be storing. The exact location of this second variable again depends on the operating system. One of the main functions of the operating system, in my case Windows 10, is to manage the memory. This line of code assigns the string pineapple to stfruit2. When this line of code executes, a copy of the contents of stfruit are assigned to stfruit2. So orange overwrites pineapple. By the time we get to the final message box statement, both variables contain the same thing. Now, let's talk about array variables. Suppose that I want to store and process several different items of fruit. I could do it like this. I've declared five separate variables and I've initialized them individually. If I want to output the contents of one of those variables, that's straightforward enough as long as I know the name of the variable. That will output pineapple. But using regular variables like this to store a group of related data items is actually quite cumbersome. What if I wanted to store 10 items of fruit, or even 100 items of fruit, I'm going to end up with rather a lot of code. Instead of using five separate string variables, I'm going to use one array variable, like this. I've used quite a lot of copying and pasting to speed things up. I'm also going to change the name of this variable just to indicate that it is actually an array variable. I'm going to prefix the name with A.
A because it's an array, ST because it's an array of strings, and fruits because, well, that's what these are. You could actually call your array anything you like, but as you write more code you'll see the benefits of a naming convention. To understand what's going on here, again we should visualise what's going on inside the computer's memory. When I declare an array variable, like this, I'm actually saying that I want to set aside a group of memory locations. To be more precise, I'm setting aside a group of contiguous memory locations. Contiguous means adjacent, next to each other. The number 4 means that I want a group of five memory locations. It might strike you as odd, but in computer science we generally count from zero. We say that the array is zero-based. Each location in that group of memory locations is referred to as an element. So I have five elements, numbered from zero to four. When this line of code executes, I'm putting the text banana into element zero. This line of code puts orange into element 1, pineapple into element 2, strawberry into element 3, and mango goes into element number 4. I'm referring to each element by its index number. When I want to reference one of those data items, again I use the index number, so in this case I'm outputting the contents of AST fruits 2, element number 2 pineapple. Let's give it a try. As expected. Let's output orange. I just have to change the 2 to a 1. If I want to output mango, I'll type a 4 here. I can also reference an element of an array less directly. Let's declare an integer variable. I'm just giving it the name i. I'm going to assign a value to that variable. And now I'm going to use the contents of i to reference an element of the array. Can you see what the program will output this time? i is equal to 3, so this reads as ast fruits. 3. It will output strawberry. Indeed it does. Let's change the value of i to 0. Now I'm outputting banana. Banana is the zeroth element of the array. We can run into trouble though. Watch this. I'm setting the value of i to be equal to 8. My array variable only has five elements, numbered from 0 to 4. There is no element number 8. So what happens when I run the program now? Index out of range exception. My program has crashed. It's crashed because it can't find element number 8. There's no such thing. Let's reset the program. Now there's one more thing I would like to show you, which is where the real power of array variables comes in. I want to output each of those items in turn, so I am going to iterate through the array using a for next loop. Watch this. For i equals naught to 4, output ast fruits i. First time through the loop, i is equal to 0, so this will output banana. Second time through the loop, i will be equal to 1, so we output orange. Then i is incremented to 2, and we output pineapple, and so on until such time as i equals 4. Let's give it a try. And you can imagine, I can iterate through a hundred array elements just as easily as I can iterate through five. Give this a try yourself. Perhaps you can set up an array with ten elements instead of five.